Colour is simple, right? Pick a colour you like and move on. Well, not exactly. There is a lot to know about colours. How colours work with paint, pencil and pen. How colours work on screens. How colours work when printing. How certain colours work together and others don't. And how colours can impact human psychology and how we feel. First, let's start with something you may have seen before. This is a colour wheel. More precisely, this is an RYB colour wheel. This is because the primary colours are red, yellow and blue. When these colours are mixed, we form the secondary colours. Blue and yellow make green, yellow and red make orange, and red and blue make purple. Further mixing of these colours create tertiary colours. Colours next to each other on the colour wheel are called analogous colours. They create the design principle of harmony. They are harmonious colours. Colours opposite each other in the colour wheel are called complementary colours. They create the design principle of contrast. They are directly opposite of each other. These can make for very dramatic and loud layouts. Now, this may seem simple so far, but here is the problem. The RYB colour wheel only works for paint, pencil and pen graphics and isn't actually the colour wheel that graphic designers use. Instead, graphic designers need to know about RGB and CMYK. Confused? Well, don't be. We'll have a closer look. Most graphic designers will use computer screens for much of their work. However, a screen doesn't use the RYB colour wheel. Your screen uses the RGB or red, green, blue colour wheel. Why? Because screens are made from incredibly small pixels of only three colours, red, green and blue. These are the three easiest colours to make from light emitting diodes or LEDs. A screen mixes these colours at various intensities to form colours. At full intensity, the colours will be so bright as to appear white on the screen. To make black, the screen simply turns the pixels off. You'll often see RGB mentioned in your various design software. So, we have the red, yellow, blue or RYB colour wheel for basic paint, pencil and pen work with very simple mixing. And we have the red, green, blue or RGB colour wheel for screens to show colours. That's it, surely? Again, not quite. RGB doesn't make a very wide range of colours, especially softer tones. So commercial printers, and even the printers in your home or school, use cyan, magenta, yellow and key or black. This is called CMYK. Here is a CMYK colour wheel. All printers convert RGB over to CMYK using the nearest match. Graphic designers that work with important clients will rightly be very protective over specif specific colours and this can cause all sorts of headaches. It can be very tricky to get a printed graphic to look precisely like an on-screen graphic. There are ways to overcome this frustration but we'll look at that in a future video. Regardless of what colour wheel you use, there are some basic concepts and terms you must know. Warm colours on any colour wheel are described as advancing colours. Colours will appear to be coming towards you, or it can make spaces feel smaller. Cool colours on any colour wheel are described as receding colours. Objects will appear further away or spaces will feel bigger. Colours can have a base hue, the default of that colour. Adding white to that colour creates a tint. Adding black or grey to that colour creates a shade. Using tints or shades of a hue is a good graphic design trick. It creates the design principle of unity and is a lot more harmonious. Colours can also change the way you feel. Have you ever wondered why certain colours are used for particular things? 
Well, that is because humans have evolved to associate certain colours with emotions. Combinations of colours also trigger certain primal instincts. Black and yellow warning stripes on things don't look much further than nature and wasps or bees. Whether purple for wealth, luxury and royalty, or green for natural, calm and fresh, colour can dramatically impact any design project. So that is the very basics of colour. We'll cover each of these topics in more detail in future videos, but for now, why not create a mood board of colours and associate these with particular emotions? Or experiment changing the colour scheme of well-known brands to see how they feel in a different palette.